Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Roberts Municipal Stadium in Evansville, Indiana, for another tremendous program of action from the United States Hot Rod Association with Championship Monster Truck Racing and Mud Bog Action. And the first board entry up this weekend is a brand new piece of equipment from the little town of Woodstock, Illinois, right up in the north central part of the state. This is the first blood board being driven by Rob Fuchs. And Fuchs, although he is a relative newcomer to this sport, won the preliminary round. Now remember, we'll be seeing both full four-wheel monster trucks and tanks around this eight car 190 foot oval indeed the quickest elapsed time from both categories of machines will meet in the championship final Shelly this is a home-built truck at a cost of over eighty thousand dollars and Rob's Ford hits the first set of cars out a tremendous job bouncing around the Atlantic now he has to make an 18 foot turn a left-hand turn with only an 18 foot radius and line up for the second set of cars and he didn't get it completely lined up being first like that, there are some disadvantages, one of which he's got to get those cars crunched before everybody else, and that slows you down. It's true. It's, it's much easier to get around the course with the cars crushed flat. The next machine pulling out is indeed one of the wildest new machines of the monster truck circuit of the United States Armored Association. This is the incredible Samson Chevrolet, originally campaigned by the man who originated the Samson line of trucks, Don Maples from Alabama, now being driven in only its second event ever by the longtime United States Armored Association tractor pulling champion, Dan Patrick. You see Dan Patrick leaning out of the cockpit, motioning to his crew chief, Mike Hollingsworth. Interesting. Hollingsworth, the guy now talking to Patrick in the cab, is the man behind the old Bushwhacker supercharged pulling dragster, ran his own Bush beer sponsored funny car for a couple of years at the pulling circuits of the United States U.S. Office Association. It's a heck of a team. A lot of experience. Another incredible wheel stand. Man, Patrick is going for a hype, and he is still on a roll, not hesitating for a moment. He sure learned from experience on that last time. He went up and over with the greatest of ease. Sideways on the approach on that one, but he lands it and crosses the finish line. A little smoke from out underneath the wheel wells. And Dan Patrick has got to be happy with that second performance. Always that look of competitiveness on his face, Shelly. He sure does have it. He's so intense about the whole experience. I, it's so hard for me to even fathom the kind of stress they're under. On the slow-mo of that second hit, you can see the truck completely crossed up. Looked like the rear independent steering was not completely straight when Dan hit those cars. However, he runs 17.78 seconds, and that's good enough to take over the number one spot from Rob Fuchs in the first blood Ford. And from Granite City, Illinois, this is Freddie Schaefer's Barefoot Tracks, the brand-new 1988 Chevrolet with supercharged, fuel-injected, alcohol-burning Chevrolet power on top of an M4 tank chassis. And earlier, we had a chance to talk to Fred Schaefer about this very special evening of competition for the Illinois team. Fred, we haven't had a chance to see the Barefoot Tracks machine in competition that much in U.S. Hobart Association racing, but with the debut of the new Bigfoot Fast Tracks, you've got to be a little concerned with the performance of that truck. Yes, I am. Uh, the two motors on there, it's really fast on acceleration, and uh, after looking at the track, the only thing I can see to do here is I'm going to have to try and make it up on the corners. Well, do you believe that uh, your machine is going to be able to out-corner that lowrider Ford? Uh, it's going to be tough, but that's that's where I'm going to have to make it up. If it's going to be made up, it's going to have to be on the corners because he's got the acceleration with the twin engines. Shelly, Freddie Schaefer is moving up in the starting line, and he's got his work cut out for him against Bob Chandler's new Bigfoot tracks. What do you think? I think this is going to be pretty exciting because these tanks handle these cars a lot differently than the monster trucks. So even though Freddie's experienced driving the monster trucks, he'll have to have a little bit different strategy when he goes over these cars. Freddie Chevrolet launches harder than any tank before the Bigfoot Ford came out. Take a look. First set of cars literally right through the car. Over them. Now making the turn as tight as he can, almost into the mud pit. And unfortunately, that cost him to go wide. Now look at the steering oh. ability of that tank as he hits it sideways and then straightens it out to cross the finish line. Well, Shelly, there you can see both tracks were on the first car, and that's all that counts. You can't just hit the cars with one track. They have to have both tires or both tracks in any type of monster truck for it to count. He straightened that thing out while on top of the cars. That's an incredible driving job. Remember, they don't have a steering wheel. They have sticks to steer it, just like a regular tank. 15.05 seconds for Freddie Schaefer in the barefoot track Chevy. Well, here is the machine that Freddie Schaefer is out to beat tonight. This is the 10th edition of Bigfoot machinery to come for Bob Chandler's four-wheel drive at Off-Road Performance Center in St. Louis, Missouri, the Bigfoot Fast Track's low-rider Ford Van Tank. 
Shelly, we had a chance to look at this incredible machine up close earlier and talk to the man himself who started this monster truck craze. Almost 13 years ago, it was Bob Chandler out of St. Louis, Missouri, who started the entire monster truck phenomenon with a big blue Ford called Bigfoot. Now in 1988, this machine, the 10th in the Bigfoot series, is an incredible piece of equipment that a lot of people think will dominate this sport just like you did back 12 years ago, Bob. And I guess the main question is, why did you decide to take such a radical approach to the construction of this tank monster? Well, I hate tanks in the first place. I don't know why. But uh, <laughs> uh, a guy came to me as Lauren Pryor out of uh, Colorado with this vehicle. He had built a chassis. It's an M84 tank or personnel carrier. And he showed it to me on tape. And I tell you what, it was impressive. What I did, I bought it from him and got it, put it all new interior in it, Ford engines and uh, my own steering, you know. And uh, I tell you what, I love it. What do you see coming up in the future for Monster Trucks? Uh, what I've done the last year and a half, we've started an organization called MTRA, Monster Truck Racing Association, which is strictly involved in safety of all monster trucks, monster tanks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we've come up with ideas like, like in this one here, there's a remote kill. My crew member can stop this thing anytime he wants. If, if a guy were to knock himself out in this or, or somehow throttle would stick, he could stop it. So I'm, I still don't know where we're going. Uh, you know, I, I work year by year but uh, I want to stay around here for a while, so we're safety, I think, is the number one thing. Here we are again. It seems like history always repeats itself, and Bob Chandler is once again at the forefront of the monster truck wars, this time with tank treads beneath him. The incredible low center of gravity of this machine, as you will see when it takes off the starting line, makes this thing launch so hard. It almost looks like a drag racing pro stalker leaving the starting line. It's the only tank tread vehicle you will ever see that actually does, if you can call it such, a wheel stand. You see the beautiful spun aluminum track wheels that were handmade for this machine. A 110 Unbelievable, almost clearing all four cars. Chandler behind the wheel of the incredible fast tracks, brings it around, and again clears three of the four cars. Absolutely incredible. He didn't seem to run into the same problems that Barefoot had uh, earlier. He rounded that corner very easily, got over the uh, four cars, no problem. The uh, just absolutely incredible job. It corners so well, it's so powerful. Look at this replay of the second hit. Absolutely incredible. The thing was literally five feet in the air from the bottom of the tracks at the elapsed time. 11.44 seconds, almost four seconds faster than Freddie Schaefer's incredible barefoot Chevy. Looking at the slow motion replay here again on the first set of cars, the wheel stand leaving the starting line, or the track stand, I guess. Now, straight up in the air, Chandler hangs on a fully suspension, full suspension underneath this machine. You can see it work on the landing. Makes it a lot smoother than any tank before it. Look at the tread distortion on that thing. You want to talk power? So that will set up a championship Final between the Samson Chevrolet of Dan Patrick, the winner of the four-wheeled monster truck class, and the brand-new Bigfoot Fast Tracks of Bob Chandler in a championship tank versus monster truck finale. Shelly Herman, this will be a monster truck versus monster tank championship dash. Originally, we were going to see the Samson Chevrolet of Dan Patrick in its first-ever championship final. We saw a little bit of smoke out of the engine compartment on their last run that took the number one spot for this class. So it looks like Rob Fuchs and the first blood Ford from Woodstock, Illinois, will be in this finale. Well, uh, this is certainly a break for him because I didn't think he expected to be back here. But the fans uh, are definitely are in two camps here. Some really think the monster truck can take it. Others have all their confidence placed in the Bigfoot fast track. Here's the great play for Rob Butte. A nice, nice watch. Now, as far as monster truck racing is concerned, you don't want to get too airborne over those cars. The higher you get in the air, the slower your run's going to be. But Rob had to hesitate there. Coming out of the second third, huge jump! All four cars bouncing around. A great job. The crowd loved that one. He's not even sticking around to, uh, to, to wave bye-bye. He's out of there. That was a rough, rough landing. Rob Fuchs, although he hasn't been seen much in U.S. Hobbit Association competition, is definitely earning a reputation for himself with that kind of performance here tonight. Let's take a look at that second hit in slow motion. This is going to be awesome. Full speed into the first, second set of cars. Look at the air this thing grabs. The elapsed time, 14.36 seconds. The quickest run by any regular four-wheel monster truck at the event by almost three full seconds. Indeed, a tremendous run for the youngster, only 28 years old, from Woodstock, Illinois. Well, pulling out, Shelley, is the machine that is here simply to win this event. Bob Chandler, the man behind the Bigfoot legacy himself, is driving tonight rather than one of the corporate wheelers. 
Indeed, Chandler running 11.44 seconds in the first round of this certainly rates a huge edge. You know, we had the chance to uh, take a little drive in that earlier today, and I got to tell you, we just when I just came around the corner like that, my heart stopped. That you get really jarred in that thing, and we weren't even going over any cars. A lot of power in this twin-engine machine, well, although it is a leave the starting line hard and sailing over the first set of cars. Chandler goes wide on the turn, smacks the wall, and now straightens it out for the second hit. Set of cars across the finish line. Man, he hit that wall hard down there. Unbelievable ride for Bob Chandler, never slowing down for a minute. Here on the slow motion replay on the first hit, Chandler in the cockpit takes a hard, hard smack. That first set of cars landing beautifully, Shelly. And then as you see, he comes around the corner here. He he clipped it a little bit. There was a the elapsed time to beat, 14.36 seconds, and as Chandler lands on this slow motion replay, bouncing around the cockpit, he crosses the finish line in 11.87 seconds, and that will take the overall championship for a very happy Bob Chandler. Bigfoot legacy lives on. to Roberts Municipal Stadium in Evansville, Indiana. Now we move into the United States Hot Rod Association's incredible four-wheel drive super modified mud racers. And Shelly Herman, this is going to be an incredible battle, if only because this is one of the shortest mud courses we've ever had to race on. Yeah, and it did cause some problems last night. Uh, thank goodness they've got that safety net at the end of the tunnel there because uh, the mud patrol really needed it last night. That's true. Of course, Tom Martin, the current uh, national championship points leader in the super modified class, is here. In fact, Greg Stone, his partner, will be driving the Mud Patrol tonight. But here's our first vehicle. Remember, this is an elapsed time contest in 65 feet of 48-inch deep mud. Bob Lacey from Marion, Indiana, in his funny car style 1969 Jeep CJ called White Lightning. Now, interestingly, this is a nitrous oxide-injected 408 cubic inch small block engine. And even more amazing, it's a Chrysler power plant. An actual Dodge wedge motor at this thing with carburetors and, of course, the NOS Fogger nitrous oxide system. Ends up putting out about 1,100 horsepower with that NOS nitrous oxide system on top. Marion, well, Marion, Iowa's own Bob Lacey, excuse me, will get a chance to set the pace with the very first run down this short pit. Now, a lot of the drivers using uh, multiple speed transmissions are not even shifting on this short course. They're blasting through in low gear only, and that's creating some tremendously high RPM finishes. RPM's up, and the Iowa racer leaves the starting line, and lots of tire spin, and he will not be that happy with that run, Shelley. On the replay, yep, there you can see it. A tremendous amount of tire spin. The first man out sometimes has to worry about the water that accumulates on top of the mud, and that may have slowed Bob Lacey down. During the preliminaries, he was in the two-second zone with another problem-plagued pass. You can see the scheme coming off the hot exhaust headers. The elapsed time, 3.41 seconds, and Bob will not be very happy with that. Here is the brand new 1932 Ford Coupe of Byron Tinky. Now, for years of the U.S. Hobbit Association Championship mud racing circuit, we saw Tinky with a all things a Chevy love truck. Here's his brand new piece of equipment. And Shelly, just about any hardcore mud fan can tell where that chassis came from. That is a Mike Fair chassis. <laughs> He's taking his time checking the gauges on the starting line, now bringing the RPMs up. Notice the extended exhaust headers, which, believe it or not, extract extra horsepower from that engine. They extract. They're tuned exhaust headers. He leaves the starting line on a good run. And again, a lot of tires, man, and it's not like he got out of the throttle just before the finish line. Mud sailing everywhere. The engine not sounding real good at the end of the run. It looked like he got out of the throttle just before the finish line, and the truck or vehicle began to sink. Of course, he can't get out of the throttle anywhere when you're on 48 inches of mud, Shelly. Here's the re uh, replay. 2.81 seconds, the elapsed time. It's good enough for the number one spot. You can see right here when he gets out of the throttle. Watch the front end take a dive. There it is, right there, sinking almost down to the hubs. And that was about five feet before the finish line. So, Shelly, that was actually a pretty good run. 2,000 horsepower. Ready to give it everything for Tom Mintz, the rookie racer. Only his fifth event. Yet that incredible 1.68 second elapsed time during preliminaries. No roof after the crash at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yet the machine seems to be running better than ever. A new supercharger on the car for this event. The mark to beat. 2.81 seconds with Byron Tinky's brand new 1932 Ford Coupe leading the way. It seems to be the body style to go. The Mud Patrol uh, 
team ran the first for Coop. Byron Dinky currently leads it with one of those fiberglass replicas. A three run and a tremendous pass, and that will easily be good enough for the number one spot. Shelly, that's what Tom Mims wanted to do. Boy, it looked like he was off to a little bit of a rough start there, too, but he held on to it right across the finish line and then some. In a situation where I thought too much horsepower was going to be a problem, Mintz did spin the tires initially, but man, it hooked up and flew across the finish line. Unbelievable. Look at the steam. Yeah, obviously the engine was heating up pretty seriously. Here is the slow motion replay. Watch the launch. Front end up. The elapsed time, 2.39 seconds. Good for the number one spot. And indeed, Tom Mintz pegged against the back of the seat, rides it out, airborne across the finish line. Number one for the rookie racer from Paxton, Illinois. This is the incredible Thundering Heart 1987 Jeep CJ5 of Mike Sneed out of Lakeville, Indiana. Machine with a 454 cubic inch nitrous oxide injected Chevy engine that Shelly Herman ran 2.26 seconds last night. Side manifold explosion at the finish line. And it's a very simple problem that can do some pretty serious damage to the engine. Apparently, he left the nitrous oxide system on as he shut the engine off. An intake valve hung open, and you hear those shotgun blasts out of the exhaust headers. Well, that might be because it is this new motor, and he said that he'd only run it once before and that it scared him to death. <laughs> so uh, maybe that was, unanticip that was uh, unanticipated for this evening. Well, leaving the starting line, he also fell to a lot of tire spin, but the elapsed time will be good enough for the number Number two spot, 2.77 seconds. And I gotta tell you, Shelly, this uh, guy is gonna be one of our new superstars. This machine has been so strong. Mike Sneed's thundering heart. Moving up to the starting line now, the nitrous oxide injected, fuel injected, methanol burning, 540 cubic inch Chevrolet engine in this 1932 Ford Coupe that uh, during the preliminaries ran 1.93 seconds for the official win. You can see Tom Martin to the right side there, who has normally driven this machine. Greg Stone, a phenomenal crew chief at this sport, who is responsible for the performance of this vehicle, is now driving. Tom is like an expectant father in a maternity room here. He's overseeing every last detail of this run because it's going to be the last one. He wants to go out a winner. Well, the final uh, handshake and everything else complete. Tom heads for safety, at least away from the slim mud. Greg Stone, crew chief and part-time driver in his last run in the Mud Patrol 32 Ford, looking for the number one spot, the time to be. Good pass, blasting across the finish line, locking up the brakes, and that will be a tremendously close run to Tom Mintz, 2.39 second run. Look at the crowd. They cannot believe the performance from this vehicle. I don't think that uh, Tom can either. He's running over there as fast as he can. I, I'm sure he's going to congratulate his partner over there. But Greg is obviously thrilled with oh, that run. Here we go up. with the meeting of the minds here down at the finish line shutdown area. I'll tell you, he is a happy young man. His last ride ever in this machine, saluting the crowd. What a ride. And indeed, like I said, it's going to be so close to that 2.39 second run that is leading right now for Tom Mintz's Shake Me 32 Ford. Look at the smile on this team's face, and they don't even know what the elapsed time is yet. Here's the launch. A lot of tire spin, but the front end up almost immediately. Beautifully straight run. Here's the elapsed time. 2.19 seconds. Good for the number one spot again for the Mud Patrol team of Greg Stone and Tom Martin. Way to go, guys. Is Heath Molt. This is a 1977 Chevy love truck that is actually street legal with the addition of uh, mufflers. It's got headlights and everything in it behind the uh, fiberglass grill. But interestingly, it's almost basically a, a street legal truck, Shelley. It's a small block, 355 cubic inch Chevrolet. And I don't think anybody's anticipating one second elapsed times out of this machine, but I'll tell you what, he's got a crowd of people here pulling for him, you wouldn't believe. Sitting patiently on the starting line, waiting for the green flag with a flagman, now leaves the line. He's got forward momentum, and that's a start, doing his best to keep the machine going. The crowd is literally scanning up for this kid. He has got a lot of fans here just to see the local racer inch his way towards the finish line. He's still got boom, and it's starting to sink down, though, and he's only five feet from the finish line. He's still going to stay in the throttle, but there's the red flag. Oh. And as Heath Moulton looks on, the distance on the run, 57 feet even. 
Mike Erderly, the Michigan Terror in the Mud Shark 1964 Chevrolet Corvette. Supercharged, fuel-injected, big block Chevrolet motivation with that new extended wheelbase we talked about, a new narrowed front tread, everything different, trying to keep this machine from crashing. Everybody who watches U.S. Harbor Association Mud Racing knows that this is the wildest single vehicle on the circuit. And Shelly, all Mike wants to do is make it through this pit without crashing. He finished number two in the preliminary round. Well, I think all the Corvette fans are rooting for him so that he'll finish first tonight. The wildest single machine in the business. The mark to beat, 2.19 seconds. A great run, airborne for the Mud Shark, landing relatively straight, though, and that is what the Mud Shark is all about. There it is, fist in the air. Mike Erderly taking, as always, a wild, wild ride through this 65-foot-long oh, mud bed. He seems pleased with it. I guess we'll have to admit that that run may be good enough to challenge the Mud Patrol team of Tom Martin. And Greg Stone for the number one spot, the mark to beat, 2.19 seconds. Let's look at the replay, always a wild ride. He stayed on top the whole time. Looks like a little bit of excess smoke out of the left bank of cylinders there. That may have been an engine problem coming up, but the elapsed time, the mark to beat was 2.19 seconds. Mike Erderly, the incredible mud shark, as we watch him go airborne over the finish line, 2.29 seconds. Look at this thing. Four feet in the air, the typical mud shark rough landing. Erderly steers her straight away from the net and away from the walls. Here's another angle of that incredible run. Now, you can see the ruts that have developed in the track, and Erderly is trying to stay within them sideways across the finish line and then airborne, missing the number one spot by a tenth of a second. Tim Hall from Champaign, Illinois, with a brand new piece of equipment, the Hall Brothers' gorgeous new Obsession Ford Ranger. This altered wheelbase Ford-powered machine made its maiden voyage in the preliminary round. And indeed, Shelly, these guys may be ones to watch. They spared no expense in building this fuel-injected Ford-powered Bronco. Leaves the starting line with a horrible amount of tires spin. Like we may have had a transmission problem there. A lot of smoke out of the engine. You can see the wheels stop, but the RPMs kept rising. And it looks like Tim Hall is in the cockpit saying, oh, what have I done? You know, this 21-year-old has been racing for seven years now, so if experience counts, he should be able to have a good run out of this. That's true. At our most recent event in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Chad Miller in the instant team, 1927 Ford E-Roadster, recorded his best ever elapsed time. Now, this nitrous oxide-injected, fuel-injected, 509 cubic inch Chevy-powered machine is one of the very few street roaster or drag racing style altered machines that are running in mud racing. The mark to beat, still the national points leaders, Tom Martin and his driver, Greg Stone, in the mud control at 2.19 seconds. And there's the green flag as Chad Miller looks down the track, slaps down the face shield, and prepares to launch. A good run, good, good run. Sideways across the finish line and spinning her out before the net. Who said this track's going away? You can get that thing off the line if you know how to do it. The instant T Roadster, again, proving that that design is one of the most efficient in all of mud racing, Shelly. Here's the, uh, the slow motion replay. You can see a little bit of tire spin on the starting line, but instantly up on the mud, and that's exactly what he was looking for. The elapsed time, 2.62 seconds. Should be good for one of the top four spots. Look at that thing, blast across the finish line. Airborne out of the pit, then locking up the brakes as he heads for the safety net and spinning her out. The last man with a chance to knock the incredible Mud Patrol 32 Ford of Tom Martin and Greg Stone out of the number one spot is Tim Ritchie, the Michigan racer with a Jeep funny car that has, of all things, Shelly, another Chrysler power plant inside. Well, if anybody can uh, beat Tom's record, it certainly could be learning to fly. Uh, Tim Ritchie has racing in his blood. His whole family's involved with uh, the race business. They own the track and trail racetrack out in Buchanan. Again, a Michigan veteran with a 512 cubic inch Dodge wedge engine with two four barrel carburetors and nitrous oxide injection. Already this season, the U.S. Howard Association Racing has put down a couple of a tremendous low two second elapsed times and certainly is a threat to the Mud Patrol team. And Tom Martin and Greg Stone know it. This event will not be over until this machine crosses the finish line and we receive the elapsed time. The starting line crew hooking up the kill switch, now telling him to stage her up and pointing to the flagman. He's ready. Banging off the starting line for Tim Ritchie. A lot of smoke up underneath the engine compartment. He 
takes it across the finish line, but no question, that was not good enough to knock the Mud Patrol out of the number one spot, and indeed, our winners again, the superstars of this sport, Tom Martin and Greg Stone in the Mud Patrol, 32 Ford. Tim Ritchie, obviously very disappointed, Shelley. Let's look on the replay. As you can see, his front tires are up, but then he starts to get a little bit bogged down. The elapsed time, 5.40 seconds. Indeed, not anywhere near good enough to make a difference in this championship battle. You can see there's quite a bit of smoke coming out of there towards That's the true, end. That's true, and I don't think that was just steam, Shelley. I think that meant engine problems for the big block Chrysler Power Chief Funny Car. But indeed, the Mud Patrol of Tom Martin and Greg Stone wins again.